Hi there, and welcome to this week's edition of TV Coast to Coast, our regular uh, chat where we get together and talk about TV, and we have our rotating team of TV critics from across the country here today. Um, I'll start with yours truly. I'm Christy Turnquist. I'm with The Oregonian and OregonLive.com in Portland, Oregon. We've also got Vicki Hyman from the New Jersey Star-Ledger and NJ.com. And Dave Walker of the New Orleans Times Picayune and NOLA.com. Hi, Dave. Hi. <laughs> so obviously the biggest story in, uh, in the TV week is the upcoming um, run of final episodes of Mad Men. The first of the final seven episodes of the show comes this Sunday, and it's the last seven episodes of the seventh season, and good grief. Um, you know, and we've had to wait a heck of a long time for these final episodes, but I will say based on the, this episode, it's been worth waiting for. I, I've just been very impressed by this episode, and it just, you know, it, I just can't help but think about the impact that this show has made. Certainly, it's one of the best TV series of the past decade. It's certainly one of the most analyzed and written about. Um, you know, if it had as many viewers as it had people writing about it, it would be just the phenomenon of all time. Um, but I think what the show has, has accomplished is, you know, you just can't underestimate it. I mean, it's been a portrait of the decade of the 1960s. It's, it's featured this gallery of characters whose, whose lives kind of illustrate all the, the, the trends that were converging in that most, most tumultuous of decades. We've seen vast changes in the roles of women um, and how minorities are viewed um, and how people's personal behavior has, has evolved. Let's hope it's evolved. Um, ideas about parenting as they were back then in short contrast let's hope, again, to how they are now. And at the center of it all has been this just fascinating character of Don Draper, played beautifully by John Hamm. And he's still underrated as far as I'm concerned. He's done just such an indelible job with this character. I mean, on the one hand, we have watched Don Draper sort of go through this decade of the 60s working in the advertising business. Um, it's been fascinating to watch uh, him work in his profession, but beyond that, it's been a portrait of, of you know, without being too pretentious about it, his existential struggle. You know, he grapples every week with, you know, who is he and what does his life mean and what has this all been about? And there's the, the Peggy Lee song, Is That All There Is, that appears in the first episode of these uh, final um, you know, final episodes. And that cuts right to the core. I mean, he's been He's been confronting some of the most basic questions people can confront no matter what the decade. You know, what's, what has my life meant? How do I find satisfaction? And it's the kind of thing that, that makes Mad Men particularly dear to my heart because Matthew Weiner, the creator of the show and its guiding force, and this wonderful cast who've created this gallery of characters, have managed to do all this, keep us in suspense, keep us fascinated, without resorting to so much of the very familiar TV... Uh, formula, you know, there there haven't really been cops and robbers, there haven't really been crimes, there haven't really been lawyers or doctors um, or violence, except for one rather notorious scene with an out of control lawnmower. <laughs> one of my favorite moments in the show's history, but admittedly quite atypical. Um, I know I'm feeling I'm you know I'm I'm feeling pretty verklempt about Mad Men coming to an end, and I know we all have our thoughts about the show, and we all have uh, thoughts about some of those favorite moments and. Anyway, I just kind of wanted to open the floor. Um, I think I'll toss, toss to you, Vicki. What, what are some of your thoughts? Well, you talked a lot about Don Draper, and I know a lot of men in my life are like Don Draper, living the dream even when he's like, you know, this poor, sad, alcoholic, lush in bed with like two different women in one night, doesn't remember either one of them. Um, I love Peggy. I mean, Peggy to me is um, the heroine of the show. She's, I mean... It's like almost like Don is in is is in descent and Peggy's in the ascendancy and I love watching how they sort of come together and um, you know help each other out. They're um, at odds. Um, there are so many moments and where what I love about Mad Men are these wonderful little moments. Um, uh, AMC replays Mad Men on Sunday mornings, and I will, you know, wake up, go downstairs, have my coffee, and sort of fast forward through some of the episodes looking for those little moments that I just adore. Um, and you, it's, it's the details that, that are offered sort of without commentary, and like a really tiny one that always gets me. I think it's from the first season where... Um, Betty and Don and the kids are having a picnic and it's like this beautiful lawn <laughs> and their know. car is in the background and they finish 
and they get up and Don picks up the uh, picks up the um the the sheet or whatever and like just tosses the garbage that's been on on the sheet and leaves it there and walks off because that's what what happened back then. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I guess you could say it's also kind of like you know a comment on their character. But I think that's just what people did back then. It wasn't Absolutely. like, oh, we have to recycle, do this. It's like those little things that just offered no comment. This is how it was. Um, but I, to go back to Peggy and Don, um, I know people will talk about the suitcases being, you know, kind of the pivotal moment for them. But there's one moment before and one moment after. And it's the, um, the moment that comes um, when Don, you finally see what happened to Peggy after she had the baby at the end of season one, because she just shows back up at work and nobody, you know, nobody really knows where she's been. And so they have a flashback to her being in either like this postpartum ward or you know, maybe even a mental ward. Um, and he's like, uh, where have you been? And she just, she has no idea what happened to her and she doesn't know what to do. And he leans forward and there's this like wonderful creak of the upholstery when he leans forward. The light coming across his face, half in shadow, half in light. It's amazing. And he's just like, whatever they want you to do, do it. And then a little bit uh, later, you know, it will shock you how much it never happened. And it just, <laughs> it just, it just totally epitomizes exactly where Don is at the moment but also, you know, giving very valuable advice for Peggy to move on. And I, I probably watched that scene, I don't know, 25 times. It's so amazing. And then, of course, if we fast forward to um, the first part of the last season where Don finally returns to Sterling Cooper and he's sort of been replaced by the cardigan wearing Lou, who we all hate. Um, <laughs> And um, Peggy is basically his boss. He's writing, like, coupons for her. And um, it's a very awkward, tense situation all throughout. And then finally, at the end, when she's sort of stymied by this um, burger presentation she has to do, she, she kind of, she's sitting in, in, I guess, what was Don's old chair. And, um, you know, she's like, basically, what do I do? And he, I, I can't remember the exact line, but he's like, well, basically, I abuse anybody who can help me. And then I go take a nap. And she says, done. And they're back to be <laughs> back to being equals but I think they finally are equals in each other's eyes and it's a beautiful moment of course it ends with um with them dancing to Sinatra which oh just like <laughs> getting very verklempt here too <laughs> um, so yeah so what I think is the beauty of Mad Men are these like lovely little moments it doesn't have to be a whole episode although there are great episodes like um shut the door have a seat or the caper episode that are just wonderful um but I mean who did not shed a tear at Carousel um, when Don is talking? I mean, it's it's just done so beautifully. And, and and you know, after Mad Men came on, and there was a whole bunch of period pieces, people are like, like, what? The core of Mad Men is that it's a period piece? Wake up, television! That is not what Mad Men is. Yes, it's about a very specific theory, but it's about the people in the period. And people, TV creators can't get that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> go on and on, Dave. What do you think? Well, I'm with I. I don't care how how it ends for any of them except Peggy. I wanted to end well for Peggy so bad. <laughs> to me, she was like, yes, John Draper, who I think a lot of viewers my age think of more or less as dad, mm -hmm. um, and Peggy's more like a big sis. And you you pull for her, you always have. And it, it it at the end of last season, it looked like things were going okay, but I really wanted to end well for Peggy more than anyone else. Um, uh, the amazing thing about the show to me, I think, was that it had so many different kinds of entry points for viewers. There was the period, there was the workplace drama. I was fascinated by that world who created the modern consumer life that we have now. Um, those men, and mostly men and some women in that office were, you know, pr uh, primal uh, architects of desire. They created the 24-7 consumption culture that we've got in a lot of ways, working hand-in-hand -hand with television uh, in a lot of ways. And I, I was always fascinated by that world, and I loved the work life. I loved the hierarchy in the office. I loved Roger and Bert and uh, all of them, and Joan, and all of that life. I loved the suburban ennui, you know, something that was dealt with a lot in in novels and literature over the years, and even during the time that it was happening, but really not so much on television. And um, uh, but more than anything, the way I connected to this show was through its music, and I wanted to just touch on that a little bit. In many ways, um, like a lot of things on Mad Men, it was a continuation of things that were established by The Sopranos, and that was uh, David Chase's goal from the 
beginning for Sopranos was to have great music in the show to help tell the story, great montages and great uh, music commenting on the action throughout. Uh, Vicky mentioned My Way, which is one of the lovely moments in the show. Uh, and there were many others, and some were overt and some were actually really very subtle. The closing credits music on Mad Men was as much about what you just watched as anything that anyone said from the very first uh, season when uh, Bob Dylan's Don't Think Twice, It's All Right concluded an episode where Don didn't uh, go with the family on Thanksgiving. He stayed home and worked. And uh, I thought it really uh, was, was resonant in, in explaining his mood in ways. The use of Tomorrow Never Knows by the Beatles signaled a whole entrance of a psychedelic era. Obviously, the live uh, version, Zuby, Zuby Zoo, which everyone was thought was a great sensation, that was a terrific uh, moment. Uh, Bert Cooper in the last frames of uh, the last episode that we saw, singing, coming to Don in uh, hallucination, and then uh, backing into his office and the door closing by itself, I just thought was, and also a nod to Robert Morris, who'd been a song and dance man on Broadway, and in the era that Mad Men uh, depicted. Uh, my two favorite sequences musically, though, were, were both Don Draper's, and um, one was the scene on the moving sidewalk in LAX, uh, set to I'm a Man by, I think, the Spencer Davis group. And, uh, you know, it was a, a guy in a cool hat on a moving sidewalk, but it, it <laughs> the sequence just took me to the setting so beautifully. Then the other one was shorter and, and briefer and a little bit more winky and jokey, but it was a, um, a scene where Don comes out of a gym set to satisfaction, where the <laughs> lyrics refer to how white his shirt could be and and he pulls out a smoke right when the lyrics mention that. And I just uh, smiled ear to ear uh, at that. And I'm one of the many musical connections I made through that show, very smart and also uh, very poignant uh, over and over on that show. So I'll, I'll miss the composition that the music added to all the time uh, on that show. Uh, and I... I'm I'm going to get out of Mad Men here and say, on a related note, there are two PBS music specials that are very recommendable this week, aside from Mad Men, and that's the Annie Lennox and Billy Porter specials. They are Friday and my mom, both excellent. And also this Sinatra documentary that's on at the same time as Mad Men, uh, Sunday Night, which is terrific. I It sucked me in last night, and I could not stop it. Um, Alex Gibney... And there's no talking heads except for Frank. It's very unique. I should say very unique. It's a unique structure and execution of a topic I know really well. And I learned dozens of cool new things about it. So uh, I'll get out of that uh, and say thank you and farewell to Mad Men. And we'll probably circle back and get back to it once it's all over. But I'm really excited about these final episodes and uh, for all the reasons that both of you guys mentioned and also for the music. Oh, yeah. I mean, I just, I couldn't agree more with, with both of you. I mean, the, the thing about this show is just, there's just so much to appreciate about it because Matthew Weiner is, is, uh, is a man who knows what he wants and he's been able to control this show and every element of it is pretty much exactly uh, as planned. Um, and it's, you know, in addition to giving us all, all that we've had to think about, it's just such a, you know, it's such a pleasure to watch the show. I mean, just the beautiful, terrific, clever costume design by Janie Bryant, who's just done an outstanding job throughout the show. The costumes, the hair, the production design, Dave, you mentioned the music, um, you know, the, the furniture. I mean, just sort of watching the 60s unfold has been such a pleasure. And I totally agree with you, Vicki, that relationship between Don and Peggy has been fascinating. And in some ways, they're kind of the same character, but just different eras. I mean, they both sort of came from humble backgrounds, built their way in their career through their talent, really. Nobody gave them that much help, a little bit of mentoring along the way. But it's, uh, it's been fascinating to sort of watch how both of them have, have sort of adapted to what people need to adapt to. And I, you know, I'm with you, Dave. I'm fascinated to see what happens with Peggy. And oh, I hope good things happen to her. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, also, I think the other interesting relationship, which is certainly brought forth in the first episode that's coming up on Sunday, is the relationship between Joan and Peggy, which was, you know, kind of antagonistic and fraught towards the beginning. And I loved how they would sort of step back, you know, they'd see what was going ar on around them and with the men in their lives and just like sit there and have a smoke and be like, yeah, can you believe this? Um, <laughs> 
I, I really enjoyed that relationship too. Um, and also one musical moment that I wanted to mention that Dave did not mention that kills me every time is at the end of um, last season where Don finally brings his kids to show them the house where he grew up in. Yeah. And um, Judy Collins, I'm getting, I'm getting like goosebumps right now. Okay. Uh -huh. um, and Judy Collins, both sides now comes on and, um, they're looking at the house, and Sally and Don just share this um, look at each other over the heads of the boys. And it's like, she's like, okay, I get it. And he's like, yeah. And it's wordless, and it's so beautiful. And with that song in the background, which is like, you know, the whole orchestration, that, you know, it's, it's so 60s. Um, it's, it's an incredible, incredible way to end the season. Yeah. Well, I, you know, and I think we definitely will have more to talk about uh, with Mad Men as it, as it goes along, but I think that's probably going to do it for this week. Um, we probably all have to get to our computers and start writing about Mad Men. I know I do. Mm -hmm, for sure. <laughs> so, so thanks, you guys, um, and thanks uh, for watching, and we will see you next time on TV Coast to Coast. Take care, you too. Bye-bye.